three exits in less than 24 hours. Big exodus from Congress before polls. Neta's deserting sinking ship. Bhagwan Sri Ram ki pran pratishta me nahi jane ka arth paap hai. No faith in Congress leadership. Is seva ke liye ham kate bhajpa me aaye hain. Manne pradhan mantri se prabhavit hokar ham bhajpa me aaye hain. Congress mukt Congress. Top focus on Five Live. What's with all the big exits from the Congress party? We're going to get into the nuts and bolts of what explains this blood loss with the Congress party, the country's oldest party. And where does this leave the grand old party just before another big election? I'm Shiv. Thanks for being with me on Five Live. As always, the headlines first. Congress leader Randeep Singh Surjewala cries witch hunt after He's caught on camera making a sexist slur on Hema Malani's. Surjewala claims the BJP has edited his video. BJP's Hema Malani says she is unbothered by this sexist slur. Kangana Ranaut speaks first and exclusively to India today. Slams Congress for repeated sexist remarks. Calls Rahul Gandhi lonely and a failure looming under his ambitious mother's shadow. Prime Minister Modi renews fight against corruption in battleground Bengal as part of his campaign. Vows Brashtachar Mukt Bharat says last 10 years were just a trailer. The war for Wayanad escalates. Rahul's nemesis Smriti Irani takes aim at Rahul Gandhi from Kerala. Asks why the Congress is taking support of banned terror groups in God's own country. Big nomination day for BJP Top Guns. Rajiv Chandrasekhar files nomination in Trivandrum. He takes on Shashi Tharoor, Hema Malani from Mathura, Tejasvi Surya in Bengaluru South. Gaurav Vallabh, Congress spokesperson. Sanjay Nirupam, Maharashtra Congress leader. Boxer Vijender Singh, ex Lok Sabha candidate. Naveen Jindal, ex Lok Sabha MP. Ravneet Singh Bittu, Congress MP. Praneet Kaur, ex Congress Minister and Member of Parliament. Baba Siddiqui, ex Congress Maharashtra Minister. Ajay Kapoor, ex Congress UP MLA. Rohan Gupta, ex Congress Social Media Head. Suresh Pachauri, ex Congress Union Minister. Arjun Modwadia, ex Gujarat Congress MLA. Sumer Singh, ex MP Congress Leader. Jagat Bahadur Singh, ex-Congress Jabalpur Mayor. S. Vijayadharani, ex-Tamil Nadu Congress MLA. Upendra Singh, ex-Congress UP Vice President. Geeta Koda, Jharkhand MP. Jyoti Mirdha, ex-Congress Rajasthan Lok Sabha MP. Rajendra Yadav, ex-Minister in the Gehlot Government. Lal Chand Kataria, ex-Minister in the Gehlot Government. Rana Goswami, ex-Working President of the Assam Congress. Basavaraj Patel, ex-Working President of the Maharashtra Congress. Mahendrajit Singh Malviya, Senior Rajasthan Congress Leader. Ashok Chaman, Ex-Congress Maharashtra Chief Minister. Jagadish Shattar, Ex-Congress MLA Candidate and former Chief Minister of Karnataka. Milind Deora, Ex-Congress Union Minister and MP. Anil Antony, Congress Leader and A.K. Antony's son. Manpreet Badal, Ex-Congress Finance Minister of Punjab. Gulam Nabi Azad, Ex-Union Minister and MP. Kiran Kumar Reddy, Ex-Congress Andhra Chief Minister. Jaiveer Shergill, ex-Congress spokesperson. Hardik Patel, ex-working president of the Gujarat Congress. Sunil Jakar, ex-president Punjab Congress. Ashwani Kumar, ex-Congress Union Minister. Aditi Singh, Rai Bareli Sadar MLA. Sushmita Dev, ex-Congress MP. RPN Singh, ex-Congress Union Minister and MP. Kapil Sibal, ex-Congress Union Minister and MP. Kuldeep Bishnoi, ex-Congress Haryana Leader. Raju Parmar, ex-Congress Gujarat MP. Naresh Rawal, ex-Congress Gujarat MP. Sravan Dasoju, ex-Congress spokesperson. Amrinder Singh, ex-Congress Punjab Chief Minister. P.C. Chako, ex-Lok Sabha MP. Jitin Prasad, ex-Lok Sabha MP. Jyotira Ditya Sindhya, ex-Minister and Lok Sabha MP. Kushbu Sundar, ex-Congress spokesperson. Urmila Matondkar, ex-Congress Lok Sabha candidate. 
Between 2019 and now, there have been even more departures from the Congress than I've actually named. I've just picked the most prominent faces, which is but a fraction of the actual number. If you go before 2019, after the BJP came to power, the names are even more in number. Alpesh Thakur, Shehzad Punawala, Amarpal Tyagi, Tom Vadakan, Dhirendra Singh, Bhuvneshwar Kalita, Hiranya Bhoyan, Krishna Tirath, Rajkumar Chauhan, Barkha Singh, Jayanti Natrajan, G.K. Vasan, Rajendra Yadav, Purushottam Sabarya, Anil Sharma, D.D. Rajput, Kaustav Bagchi, Vijay Bahuguna, N. Biren Singh, Pema Khandu. As you can see, the list literally just goes on and on and on. In virtually every instance of a big departure from the Congress party, some leader or the other has said one of three things, viewer. And we're talking about this as a big media headline because three big Congress leaders have quit the party in just 19 hours gone by. One, that the party gave them everything and yet they've quit, which is actually true. Two, that they've been lured by the temptations of the BJP's money power. And three, that they've jumped across to avoid scrutiny from central agencies. It's possible that this is true in some cases, quite likely in fact, but could it be true all across? Now I know some of you viewers might be legitimately, legitimately and justifiably wondering, why is Shiv focusing on the Congress party? What about the BJP to which most of the names that I've just taken have jumped to? What about the shamelessness and the washing machine of the BJP? I concur with that view. Why is the BJP taking in so many people that it has spent so much time criticizing and battling on the political landscape for so long? But I believe that requires a completely separate segment on my show, and I promise to do that very, very soon, because those numbers are truly very, very compelling. But for now, we're focusing on the Congress party, which has stopped even for a moment, has it even stopped for a moment to wonder whether this sinking ship syndrome really helps the party? Does it help that Rahul Gandhi has on more than one occasion, uh, the man described as the fountainhead of the party's ideology, projects himself as a mohabbat ka dukan, but in the same breath, contemptuously calls upon those with an RSS mindset to quit his party, as if not a single one of those named above has quit for legitimate reasons. Five years of bleeding and then some of its strongest leaders appears to have had no effect on the Congress party and its attitude towards this blood loss. A party happy to radiate all blame outwards with virtually no question among its own. Which is why leader after leader ditching the party so gamely washes frustrated linen in public in what has become a truly sad political spectacle in this country, a defining feature of the last one decade. Will the Congress simply say good riddance after every major exit from the party ranks until there's nobody left for the party to get rid of? That's a question for the country's oldest party, the biggest opposition, and all of this just weeks before the next big election. Three big exits from the Congress party in just 19 hours is the latest bloodletting from the grand old party. Gaurav Vallabh, high profile Congress spokesperson, has joined the BJP just hours after he wrote a letter calling his party directionless. Mind you, a party that made him fight on their ticket twice. He calls that party directionless and quits the party and joins the proverbial enemy camp of the Congress party. Vijender Singh, the world, uh, you know, the, the, the big champion boxer, former Congress leader, fought on a Lok Sabha ticket, lost in 2019. A day after he endorses Rahul Gandhi's attacks on Prime Minister Modi, he jumps to the BJP. Sanjay Nirupam claims to have dumped the Congress party as well, holds a vociferous press conference, abusing all aspects of the Congress party to which he has belonged for all these years. These are just some of the netas who've dumped the Congress party in the last few days. 19 hours is all it took for three names to make their way to the door. The list goes on, as you saw at the beginning of this show, but what has stunned many is the Congress's chalta hai attitude. The top leadership has been mum on these latest three exits so far. The Congress is set to enter the poll race, apparently bruised and battered. Take a look. Congress's top TV face, 
who spiritedly defended party stand in Gandhi's, springing a massive surprise. Spokesperson Gaurav Vallabh dumped Congress to join BJP. Vallabh in his parting letter called Congress a directionless party, which regularly abuses Sanatan Dharm and wealth creators. This ideology ko soch ke maine join kiya tha ke naye ideas ka, intellectual ideas ka, naye soch ka wahan par samman hoga, par naye soch ka, naye ideas ka, naye logo ko samman chhod ke crush karne ki prakriya Bharat ko aage nahi le ja sakti. The blow to Gandhi's came a day after another high-profile exit from Congress. Champion Olympic boxer and Congress Neta Vijender Singh had joined BJP on Wednesday. Walking into BJP arms only weeks after walking with Rahul Gandhi in his Bharat Joro Yatra. जी देश सेवा के लिए हम कहते हैं भाजपा में आए हैं मानने प्रधानमंत्री से प्रभावित होकर हम भाजपा में आए हैं जो उनके कार्य करने की शैली है जो उनका तरीका है वो हमें बहुत पसंद है तो इसलिए हम भाजपा में ये काफी अचानक लग रहा है आपका सोशल मीडिया देखते हैं आप भारत जोड़ो यात्रा में भी थे आपका नाम चल रहा था की मथुरा से शायद आपको लड़वाया भी जाए कांग्रेस की टिकट पर इसी दौरान अचानक से आपने ये डिसीजन लिया जी अगर सच होता तो हम यहाँ थोड़ी न होते on Thursday, prominent Maharashtra leader Sanjay Nirupam said he quit Congress over seat snub. Attacking Congress ally Udhav Sena over seat snub. The Mumbai ke garib pravasi majduro ko mukt bhojan karane ki jo yojana thi us yojana me se contractor se unne dalali li jo khichdi supply ki gai thi us khichdi supplier se unhone दलाली खाई है जिसकी छानबीन हो रही है और ऐसे खिचड़ी चोर उम्मीदवार को शिवसेना ने हमारे सर पे थोपा है हम इसका सरासर विरोध करते हैं डेज अगो रोहन गुप्ता एन अदर टॉप कांग्रेस स्पोक्स पर्सन है पार्टी अमिड लास्ट स्केल एक्सोडस कांग्रेस हैज ऑफन ब्रेजन डिट आउट रिफ्यूजिंग टू इंट्रोस्पेक्ट एंड ब्लेमिंग टर्न कोर्ट इन स्टेड वॉट remains surprising is the congress leadership continues to remain mum on these exits that too which is happening ahead of the lok sabha elections especially in case of leaders such as gaurav ballab who had remained not only the prominent faces of the congress party in the media but has also contested from congress's ticket twice in the last 5 years as Congress bleeding by exodus enters 2024 poll arena, bruised and battered, one wonders, has Rahu's Bharat Joro Yatra failed to unite even Congress? With Ashwarya Paliwal, Polumi Shaha and Amit Bharadwaj, Bureau Report, India Today. And one of the three big Congress faces to quit the party in the last 24 hours is champion boxer Vijender Singh. Someone who has not only fought on a Congress ticket in the Lok Sabha election in 2019, but someone who has been very much part of the Bharat Jodo Yatra, Bharat Jodo Nyaya Yatra, posed like this with Rahul Gandhi, you know, seen to be close to Rahul Gandhi during his campaign yatras. Uh, Vijender Bhai, you are welcome to the three people who have quit the Congress in the last 24 hours. What is happening? Vijender Bhai, what is happening in the Congress? जी कोई तो कमी ही रही होगी उनके बीच में बिकॉज हम छोड़ कर आ रहे हैं सिर्फ अपने आत्म सम्मान के लिए और हम चाहते हैं कि हम देश हित में काम करें हम चाहते हैं कि बहुत सारी चीजें जो हम उस पार्टी में रहकर नहीं कर सकते तो हम चाहते हैं कि भारतीय जनता पार्टी में आकर करें तो बहुत सारी पाबंदियां होती हैं वहां पर तो इसलिए कहते अभी तो बहुत सारे लड़के और भी आने के लिए तैयार हैं जो यंग है जो जवान है तो अभी बहुत सारे लड़के वो भी और भी आएंगे लेकिन विजेंदर भाई 24 घंटे में क्या इतना बड़ा बदल गया आपके लिए 24 घंटे पहले तो आप राहुल गांधी के जो जो अटैक्स थे प्राइम मिनिस्टर के ऊपर वो आप तो रीट्वीट कर रहे थे सोशल मीडिया पर एक महीने पहले आप राहुल गांधी के साथ भारत जोड़ो न्याय यात्रा में पोज करके बॉक्सिंग पोज करके एक फोटो आपने ट्वीट किया तो क्या बदल गया इस एक महीने में या चौबीस घंटे में 
जी कहते बदलाव के लिए तो कहते कि आप किसी से भी ले सकते हैं कहते हो तो दुश्मन से मिल जाए तो भी अच्छी बात होती है जब उंगलीमान कहते कि बहुत बड़ा डाकू था जब गौतम बुद्ध से वो मिला तो उसका कहते हरदम परिवर्तन एक एक सेकंड में हो गया तो ये कोई बड़ी बात नहीं होती कि आप क्या अब कैसे क्या हुआ तो लेकिन आप सही दिशा में जा रहे हैं आप सही पार्टी में आप अच्छा काम करना चाहते हैं तो इसलिए मैं भारतीय जनता पार्टी में आया हूँ विजेंद्र बहुत ऐसे लोग हैं जिन्होंने कांग्रेस पार्टी को छोड़ा है रिसेंटली रिसेंट मंथ्स में ज्यादा लोग बोलते हैं कि वो पार्टी का जो स्टैंड है राम मंदिर पे या वो सनातन धर्म को लेकर उसके उससे वो सहमत नहीं है इससे इससे बहुत पॉलिटिकली तकलीफ हुआ है क्या पार्टी लीडरशिप पब्लिक की आवाज नहीं सुन पा रहा है और उनके लीडर्स को नहीं सुन पा रहे ग्राउंड सेंटिमेंट को इग्नोर कर रहा है क्या आपको ऐसे लगता है कांग्रेस में जी आई थिंक उनकी टीम जो है आई थिंक वो सही से काम नहीं कर पा रही है और जो उनको जो एक जनता का एक एक आम कहते नागरिक का एक मैसेज है वो उन तक नहीं पहुंच पा रहा है कि भैया जनता क्या चाहती है वो बदलाव चाहती है तो किस तरह का बदलाव चाहती है युवा वो का कहते कि नौकरी चाहिए तो उनको कब कैसे कहाँ चाहिए तो बहुत सारे सेंटिमेंटल हैं जो उनके उनके साथ काम नहीं कर पा रहे उनको कहते हैं Uh, कभी एक मुद्दे पे काम करना फिर उसको कूद के कहीं दूसरे मुद्दे पे चले जाना तो मैं नहीं मानता कि कहीं ना कहीं सही है विजेंद्र आप तो कल से काफी ट्रोल हो रहे होंगे सोशल मीडिया पर आपके आपके जॉइनिंग वाला सेरेमनी को लेकर काफी ट्रोल हो रहे होंगे लोग बोल रहे हैं कि विजेंद्र का स्पाइन नहीं है खुददार नहीं है आइडियोलॉजी नहीं है वो बिल्कुल वीर वीर जवान नहीं है तो इस क्रिटिसिजम का क्या जवाब देंगे आप जी उसका जवाब बस यही है कि मैं जब मैं कांग्रेस में गया था 2019 में मैंने चुनाव लड़ा था सडनली चुनाव लड़ा था और उसमें कहते उस तरह का बहुत मेरी कहते कि उस टाइम भी बहुत क्रिटिसाइज किया गया था मुझे और अभी जैसे ही मैं भारतीय जनता पार्टी जुड़ा अभी लोगों ने कहते वही क्रिटिसाइज किया कि भैया आप ऐसा क्यों किया ये किया वो किया तो भैया उनको बस मेरा एक ही जवाब है कि कहते कि पब्लिक है सब जानती है और जनता का कहते हो एक सोमनी है कि लोगों का काम है कहना लोग तो कुछ भी कहेंगे तो मैं इन पे ज्यादा तोज्जो नहीं देता अपना मेरा जो काम है वो मेरे लिए अहम है जो जनता की सेवा है वो मेरे लिए अहम है जो नौजवानों के सपने हैं वो मेरे लिए अहम है आखिरी सवाल विजेंद्र आप, 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 आपका कांग्रेस छोड़ने से पहले काफी मीडिया में बस चल रहा था कि आप कांग्रेस के प्रत्याशी होंगे मथुरा में हेमा मालिनी के खिलाफ और बिल्कुल दूसरा दिन आपने कांग्रेस पार्टी क्विट कर दिए तो बीजेपी में आके क्या सोचे हैं आपने क्या विजन है क्या करेंगे बीजेपी में आप जी मैं हिंदुस्तान के युवाओं के लिए हमारे हरियाणा के जो युवा हैं उनके लिए बहुत सारे काम करना चाहता हूँ जो स्पोर्ट्स फेटर्निटी के जो इतने हमारे स्पोर्ट्स पर्सन है स्पोर्ट्स गर्ल है हमारी चाहे वो बॉक्सर हैं रेसलर हैं तो उनके लिए मैं बहुत सारे काम करना चाहता हूं और मैं चाहता हूं कि उनको किसी तरह की कोई भी दुख तकलीफ ना हो विजेंद्र सिंह हमसे बात करने के लिए बहुत धन्यवाद ऑल द बेस्ट फॉर योर न्यू पॉलिटिकल इनिंग्स 24 फोर आवर्स आफ्टर क्विटिंग द कांग्रेस जॉइनिंग द बीजेपी वेल इट इज वॉट इट इज वील टू सी वॉट पाथ द बीजेपी गिवस टू द चैंपियन बॉक्स वीव गॉट सम ब्रेकिंग न्यूज कमिंग इन Well the road to the 2024 election is littered with surprises twists and turns and here's the latest twist none of it confirmed just yet but this is the buzz could robert vadra be fielded by the congress party to fight from the amethi seat against the bjp smriti irani robert vadra has hinted at an amethi poll fight we're going to play out for you what he said in just a moment but robert vadra has said he's open to taking on smriti irani in amethi listen into what robert vadra has just said nahi main ye nahi keh raha amethi se main hu aur priyanka raibale se hain jo bhi congress party chunengi wahan jo ummeedwar honge wahan ke log jo bjp ko takkar de sakte hain ya wahan sahi jo vyakti honge jo wahan ke सांसद बने तो मुझे लग रहा है कि 
कांग्रेस पार्टी चुनेगी और चाहे गांधी परिवार से हो या कोई और कांग्रेस के आदमी हो जिनसे या महिला हो जो वहाँ प्रगति ला सकते हैं और जो स्मृति ईरानी नहीं कर पाए वो मेहनत करें और तो मुझे लग रहा है अभी मैं प्रियंका की क्या सोच है या गांधी और बाकी लोगों की क्या सोच है उन उसके बारे में मैं अपनी कोई विशेष टिप्पणी नहीं दे सकता हूं क्योंकि वो उनकी सोच है वो अमेठी को रिप्रेजेंट करें या देश के किसी और and just to put that into a little bit of perspective it's not the first time that robert vadra has said that he is willing to fight and that he listen to whatever the party says he said it at least twice before so just putting it out there while you take in that news break about robert vadra saying if he's asked to fight from amethi he actually might do that now shifting focus from amethi where rahul gandhi used to be the mp to wayanad where he is the title defender a three way battle has begun for the wayanad lok sabha poll making it one of the most high profile seats in this election with smriti irani now landing in wayanad to hold a massive road show for the bjp candidate there and party state chief k surendran she obviously let loose at rahul gandhi who she had defeated in amethi 5 years ago slamming him and the grand old party for its promises take a look at this obviously smriti irani flown into wayanad for the optics and the spectacle being the giant slayer from 5 years ago take a look at this union minister smriti irani entered the wayanad poll pitch holding a massive road show in support of the bjp candidate k surendran who filed his nomination on thursday surendran fighting against congress's rahul gandhi and cpi's ani raja smriti irani launched a scathing attack on the grand old party accusing it of taking support of banned terror groups like the pfi main congress party se puchna chahti hu ki satta ka itna lalach kyun Why such hunger for power that you will take support from banned PFI leaders as well? अगर दम है तो एस डी पी आई के समर्थन को ठुकरा कर देश को संदेश देने की हिम्मत रखे राहुल गांधी Smriti Irani who defeated Rahul from Amethi in 2019 claimed that the Congress leader is cheating Wayanad the same way he betrayed Amethi. सुना है कि कल गांधी खानदान ने ये घोषणा की है कि वायनाड अब उनका परिवार है परिवार के नाम पर धोखा अमेठी को दे चुके हैं इस बार वायनाड को परिवार के धोखे में नहीं आना The BJP has attacked its rivals, Congress and Left Front, accusing them of playing a friendly match. They have a fight between LDF and UDF is a big mockery, na? Uh, in Delhi last two days back, D Raja, the husband of Shrimati Ani Raja, is hugging uh, Rahul Gandhi and he is uh, uh, asking support to the people to become uh, to make Rahul Gandhi as a prime minister. Here in Wayanad, his wife and CPI national leader Ani Raja ji is contesting against Rahul Gandhi. So the drama is very clear. The left front is in no way amused by Rahul's candidature from Wayanad. Its leaders have been questioning the need for Rahul to fight from Kerala, where the BJP is not a big force. Fielding Mr. Rahul Gandhi in Wayanad is a short-sighted decision of the Congress party. We all Uh, are fighting in order to save democracy save constitution who is posing threat to the constitution and democracy it is bjp rss combined and why mr rahul gandhi doesn't want to fight bjp rss directly rahul on the other hand has defended his choice of wayanad while remaining silent on whether he will also contest from his earlier constituency of amethi I was really embraced by the people of Vienna regardless of which party they came from regardless of which community they came from regardless of how old they were every single person in Vienna gave me love affection respect and treated me as one of their own 
Rahul's roadshow on Wednesday was noticed for absence of any flags, possibly to avoid a repeat of 2019 when the BJP called the party flags of IUML as Pakistan's flags. Kerala Chief Minister Pinaray Vijayan took pot shots at the Congress for sidelining its strongest ally in the state. With the battle lines drawn, the stage is set for a rebetting electoral contest in the picturesque landscapes of Vayanad. With Moshimi Singh and Shivi Mol KG, Bureau Report, India Today. Let me just go a little deeper into the Wayanad seat so you get even more perspective of why this is an interesting contest. In 2019, Rahul Gandhi's decision to contest from Wayanad, in addition to Amethi, garnered a lot of attention because it signaled that the Congress was not confident of winning Amethi, and it turned out they were right. With a significant increase in vote share compared to 2009 and 2014, securing 64.67%, Rahul Gandhi clinched an easy victory in Wayanad. However, questions loom over whether he can replicate that success in the 2024 election. In 2009, the Congress dominated Wayanad with a 49.86% vote share, overshadowing the CPI, the Communist Party of India, and other contenders. Yet, by 2014, and this is important, the Congress's vote share had dwindled down to 41.21%, while the CPI witnessed a surge to 38.92%. Despite Rahul Gandhi's triumphant return in 2019, securing over 64% of the vote, the dynamics of the constituency actually remain fluid. The challenge lies in sustaining this momentum amidst an evolving political landscape, even in Kerala, as speculation swirls around Gandhi's electoral strategy and who his potential rivals will actually be. Well, in the battleground of Wayanad, Rahul Gandhi of the Congress is set to face off the rivals that we're talking about, Annie Raja of the CPI and K. Surendran of the BJP. You've already heard enough about how the CPI is a part of the India Alliance and therefore it's ironic that he's taking them on in Kerala. But with Rahul Gandhi's formidable presence bolstered by his big 2019 victory, securing, like I said, over 64% of the vote share, the competition is tough. However, challengers like... Annie Raja and K. Surendran aim to disrupt Rahul Gandhi's dominance, capitalizing on shifting voter sentiments and local dynamics, as also the Congress's national reputation and muscle taking a massive beating. The outcome of this battle will undoubtedly shape the future trajectory of Wayanad's political landscape. Well, now let's talk about Hema Malani. The sitting BJP MP from Uttar Pradesh is Mathura seat. Well, the opposition India bloc leaders, including Supriya Srinath, H.S. Ahir and Randeep Surjewala, are facing a huge backlash for either on-record abusive rhetoric or posts on their social media accounts that they've distanced from. Asit Majumdar's derogatory comments from the Trinamool towards the BJP's locket strategy have also sparked criticism. Well, the Congress's lax response has drawn widespread condemnation, with top leaders Rahul Gandhi and Mamta Banerjee remaining silent over the sexist attacks of their leaders. Will the party's abusive rhetoric impact its electoral prospects negatively at a time when Nari Shakti and Nari Pride has become a big calling card on both sides? Take a look. In the midst of election campaign, many India bloc leaders are embroiled in a series of controversies marked by abusive rhetoric. First, Supriya Srinath and H.S. Ahir flung themselves in a soup over derogatory remarks against Kangana Ranaut. And now senior leader Randeep Surjewala faces severe backlash after making sexist comments about BJP's Mathura candidate and actor Hema Malini. Surjewala's jibe at Hema Malini provoked a scathing response from Uttar Pradesh Chief Minister Yogi Adityanath. भारत की परंपरागत परंपरा संस्कृति की कला को वैश्विक मंच पर स्थापित करने में अपना पूरा जीवन लगा दिया हो और यह भी अगर कांग्रेसियों को बुरा लगता है 
तब तो उनको भगवान भी अब बचा पाएगा कि नहीं बचा पाएगा ये मुझे स्वयं उनके सत्य होता Surjewala defended himself by accusing the BJP of selectively distorting his statements. MP kyu banate hain taki wo hamari awaaz utha sake hamari baat manwaye isiliye banate honge koi e mamal nahi to e nahi ne ke liye banate honge film star to hain hum to e mamal ne ji ka bhi bada samman karte kyu dharmender ji ke pyar kiye bahu hai hamari parantu ye film star to ho sakta hai koi हम लोग जो है मुझे या गुप्ता जी को इसलिए आप बनाते हैं कि साहब हम लोग जो हैं आपकी सेवा कर सकते इन बंगाल टीएमसी एम एल ए असित मजुमदार मेड डेरोगेटरी कॉमेंट्स ऑन बीजेपी एम पी लॉकेट चैटर्जी एट अ पब्लिक इवेंट अरे भाई ओके ममता बनर्जी सियात का नीचे बोल रहा था बीजेपी का अच्छे कह दो वो अच्छे बीजेपी से आज ठीका नहीं अच्छे तीनों मूल्य चार मैंने बुस्ते पर चल तो दोनों बड़ी माल दुग्गी माल दुग्गी माल तीनों मूल्य सब में वाचे अब अब बीजेपी सब में वाचे TMC men think that it is fine because Mamta Banerjee is giving 500 rupees to the women of West Bengal and that is enough money to trade with their dignity and self respect and that is why these kind of comments are being made and this is not an isolated comment so please call up Mamta Banerjee and ask her to respond. on why she is quiet on the kind of lecherous comments that men in her ranks are making the first in the series of abusive remarks came from congress leader supriya shrinit who targeted the bjp's candidate from mandi in himachal pradesh kangna ranaut sparking widespread outrage this was followed by a derogatory comment by another congress leader hs ahir on kangna Despite subsequent clarifications and attempts to mitigate the fallout, the Congress party faced criticism for its failure to address the issue promptly. मेरे Facebook और Instagram account का access कई लोगों के पास है उसमें से किसी एक व्यक्ति ने आज एक बेहद घृणित और आपत्तिजनक post की मुझे जैसे ही पता चला मैंने सर्वप्रथम उस पोस्ट को डिलीट किया क्योंकि जो कोई भी मुझे जानता है वो अच्छी तरह से जानता है कि मैं कभी भी किसी भी महिला के खिलाफ व्यक्तिगत भद्दी और भूंदी टिप्पणी कर ही नहीं सकती हूं मैं इसकी घोर विरोधी हूं द साइलेंस ऑफ टॉप लीडर्स लाइक राहुल गांधी एंड ममता बैनर्जी ऑन दीज इंसिडेंट हैज फर्दर फ्यूल कंसर्न अबाउट दर टॉलरेंस ऑफ सच बिहेवियर अमंग देर रैंक्स ब्यूरो रिपोर्ट इंडिया टूडे And after an alleged sexist remark by Congress leader Randeep Singh Surjewala on the BJP's Mathura MP Ema Malini, the latter says she isn't bothered much by such attacks. Here's what she said to us. Congress के नेता जो है वो महिलाओं के खिलाफ कई टिप्पणियां करते हैं। कंगर नॉट को आपने देखा कैसे उनके खिलाफ जो बयानबाजी की फिर आपके खिलाफ आपको लेकर आज एक बड़ा बयान दिया गया कांग्रेस के नेता के द्वारा। इन सब चीजों को आप किस तरह देखते हैं? अब इन सब का आते हैं कि योगी जी ने जवाब दे दिया है। I think he has given a good answer, so that is enough. So I, I don't want to do. deal with all this. So I think I'm much above all this thing. I don't want to get into this. जो नारी शक्ति की बात करते हैं वो इस तरह नारी शक्ति के बारे में वो they have to learn from our Modi ji, ना Modi ji कितना मान सम्मान देते हैं। क्या ही कांग्रेस की frustration आपको लगता है? Yeah, it is a, naturally it is their frustration which they are showing by talking like this. And सब ठीक हो जाएंगे बिचारे। And the BJP's Mandi in Himachal candidate Kangana Ranaut has also lashed out at the Congress, saying it has opened a nafrat and not mohabbat ki dukan. Here's a short excerpt from her exclusive interview to India Today's Ashok Singhal. Hema Malini ko leke bhi ek Congress neta ka bayan jo hai viral hua. Unhone comment kiya. Halanki unhone baad mein kaha ki isko tod mo road karke pesh kiya gaya. Aur apne tweet bhi kiya. Isko kis dhang se dekhte hain? तो अब आप बताइए मैं और इसको किस ढंग से देखूं अगर वो एक जवान स्त्री को देखते हैं तो उनके अंगों को लेके वो कमेंट करते हैं और एक जो महिला है जो कि एक सीनियर महिला है 75 फाइव ईयर ओल्ड की है और उनके नाचने से जो कि क्लासिकल भरतनाट्यम की डांसर है उनको नचनिया कहते हैं नाचने वाली या इस तरह के अपशब्द कहते हैं 
तो एक मतलब एक बुजुर्ग महिला को भी वो लोग छोड़ते नहीं है तो वो क्या चाहते हैं कि महिलाएं क्या करें किस तरह से वो रहें क्या वो अपनी कब्र खोद के उसमें गढ़ जाए तो ही बेहतर होगा इस तरह की जो जो नीच सोच है वो भी एक इतनी सीनियर महिला के लिए इतनी सीनियर आर्टिस्ट के लिए जिन्होंने अपना पूरा जीवन जो है वो कला के लिए ही समर्पित कर दिया है उन्होंने आज तक एक ऐसा दिन नहीं गया होगा जब उन्होंने तीन से चार घंटे का रियाज नहीं किया होगा क्या हमारे वेदों में से एक साम नहीं है जिसमें संगीत और नृत्य की कलाओं पर विशेष चर्चा हुई है तो उनको एक ज्ञानी एक ऋषि या एक, एक महान व्यक्तित्व की तरह ना देखकर उनको एक नाचने वाली और ऐसे अभद्र टिप्पणी उनपे करने वालों की क्या सोच है वो आपसे छुपी नहीं है वाइल कैंपेनिंग इन बिहार एंड बंगाल टुडे प्राइम मिनिस्टर मोदी रेन्ड फायर ऑन द ऑपोजिशन इन अ मेगा रैली इन जमुई इन बिहार टू किक ऑफ टुडे इज कैंपेन प्रोसीडिंग द प्राइम मिनिस्टर कॉनर द ऑपोजिशन ओवर द बिग ट्वेंटी ट्वेंटी फोर इशू ऑफ करप्शन द सेम प्लैंक दैट द प्राइम मिनिस्टर इन द बीजेपी आर बींग हिट विद बाई द ऑपोजिशन Modi claimed that the Congress and Lalu Prasad's RJD led government in Bihar has looted people's money and tarnished India's image he said that he will ensure that the loot is returned to the people take a look at the highlights from the prime minister's rallies Congress aur RJD jaisi partiyan hain jinhone apni sarkar ke samay puri duniya mein देश का नाम खराब किया था आरजेडी और कांग्रेस के काले दौर में यहां क्या हालत होते थे जमुई की पहचान कैसी बना दी थी इन लोगों ने जमुई आरजेडी के जंगल राज का कितना बड़ा भुक्त भोगी होता था भ्रष्टाचारी कान खोल करके सुन ले ये मोदी नहीं आया 140 करोड़ देशवासियों का भ्रष्टाचारियों के प्रति गुस्सा निकल करके आया है मोदी कहता है भ्रष्टाचार हटाओ वो कहते हैं भ्रष्टाचारी बचाओ साथियों कांग्रेस हो या आरजेडी इन्होंने हर मौके पर बिहार और बिहारी गौरव का अपमान किया है यही कांग्रेस और आरजेडी की जिसने करपुरी ठाकुर का अपमान किया था एंड दिस इज ओनली द बिगिनिंग ऑफ वॉट्स कॉन बी अ ट्रूली हेक्टिक रैली कैंपेन सीजन प्राइम मिनिस्टर मोदी इज शेड्यूल्ड होल्ड सेवरल रैलीज एज यू कैन इमेजिन अहेड ऑफ द लोकसभा पोल्स मच मोर देन इवन द ट्वेंटी नाइनटीन कैंपेन ही सेट टू He's in Bihar today, where he's set to hold at least 15 rallies over the next few days. Listen. Today, wherever my eyes are reaching, people are coming to my eyes. It is like the feeling of the sea, the sea, the sea, the sea, the sea, the sea, the sea. The BJP's mission 370 and 400 for the NDA. Maharashtra with its 48 seats, Bihar holding 40, and Tamil Nadu with 39 Lok Sabha constituencies. Lokapriya Pradhan Mantri Sri Narendra Modi ji ka agaman. Prime Minister Narendra Modi in Bihar on Friday for a rally in Jammu, trained back-to-back -back guns on the opposition parties. Hamari Sarkar mein Ram Mandir ka. 500 वर्ष पुराना सपना पूरा हुआ जबकि यही आरजेडी कांग्रेस ने राम मंदिर न बने इसके लिए पूरी ताकत लगा दी थी मोदी कहता है भ्रष्टाचार हटाओ वो कहते हैं भ्रष्टाचारी बचाओ जिन्होंने लूटा है उन्होंने लौटाना पड़ेगा कि नहीं पड़ेगा रेलवे में भर्ती के नाम पर जो लोग गरीब युवाओं से जमीन लिखवा ले वो बिहार के युवाओं का कभी भला नहीं कर सकते 
Modi has planned 15 rallies across Bihar for the 2024 campaign. In the previous Lok Sabha elections, the NDA secured 39 out of 40 parliamentary seats in the state. Prime Minister Modi is scheduled for at least 18 rallies in Maharashtra. A state with fragmented politics, where in 2019 polls, the BJP won 23 seats, while the undivided Shiv Sena secured 18. However, since then, the Shiv Sena and the NCP have faced splits, making the 2024 election outcome uncertain. Modi plans to campaign for the four days in Tamil Nadu. Road shows and rallies are slated across various parts of Tamil Nadu from April 9th to April 12th. Prime Minister's election events will commence in South Chennai. Coimbatore and Virudhnagar starting next Tuesday. The BJP faces a tough challenge in Tamil Nadu without a major ally like AIADMK this time. During the 2019 general elections, the DMK-led Secular Progressive Alliance secured a landslide victory, winning 38 out of the 39 seats. The state is set to vote on April 19th, all in a single day. An extensive outreach across these three states, as Brand Modi seeks a third consecutive term. Bureau Report, India Today. Now, Indian electoral politics has always had a bit of a royal color. Many former royals, the sons and daughters of royals, have fought Indian elections in the past. But if you look at the seat list this time, the ticket list this time, there's an especially big royal flavor, at least on the BJP side. The party has now declared Mahima Vishweshwar Singh as its candidate from the Raj Samand Lok Sabha seat. Her husband, Vishwaraj Singh, a descendant of Maharana Pratap, is from Mewar. Here's a detailed report. Royal sign and 52-year-old Mahima Singh has been campaigning arduously in Raj Samand Lok Sabha constituency. Fighting the first political battle of her life. A shower of petals greet Mahima when campaigning and women sing praising her clan which belongs to the revered Maharana Pratap. Mahima is the Bahu of the royal family of Mewar. Married to Vishwaraj Singh, a direct descendant of Maharana Pratap. Her husband is the BJP MLA from Nath Dwara. Our family, Mewar family has been connected with this area for 14 years. 1400 years and they are like my family. Victory will be there and my advantage is that all eight MLAs mm -hmm. from all Vidhan Sabha seats are BJP. And A graduate in psychology from Delhi-based Lady Sri Ram College, Mahima says politics came naturally to her. On the campaign trail, she uses chaste Marwadi to connect with voters. जब मैं समर्थन के लिए निकली थी तो मैंने जैसे बोला ये मेवाड़ पूरा हमारा परिवार है तो मेरे लगता है मेरे मैं वहीं से जैसे सामाजिक जुड़ाव तो था और बाकी जो चीजों के बारे में जानना था मैं उस दौरान बहुत कुछ सीख गई हूं तो ये स्विच ओवर ये मेरे लिए लाइक होता है ना पढ़ाई तो एक नए तरह की पढ़ाई थी Mahima is contesting from Raj Samand Lok Sabha seat, which was earlier held by Dia Kumari, another leader from a royal lineage. A princess from Jaipur, Dia Kumari had to vacate the seat after she had won the assembly poll from Vidyadhar Nagar seat in Jaipur. The fact is that because we've been around for, here for 1400, 1500 years and we've always kept in touch and uh, we have uh, we have this reputation and we have the link with the people here. Mm. So there is a general, at, at the very outset, there is a level of trust. How has the response been? Because you have been traveling with her to different places in Rajsamand. How has locally been the response uh, since uh, it was announced that she will be contesting on BJP ticket? 
Well, the response has been very good, and everybody is uh, very much in support of her candidature. I am very happy that I have got a seat in Kumar Ji. And our village is the issue that there are no roads, there are no roads, and the second issue is that there is a lot of education, there is a lot of education, there is a lot of education, and there is a lot of English medium school. We need a lot of education. Wife Mahima's campaign had helped Vishwaraj beat Congress in the last election. Congress is the hope that you will be able to take the Mahima Kumari in front of Mahima Kumari? No, we will not take it. Narendra Modi is not going to take it in front of Modi. Do you think that you will vote for Modi? Yes, Modi is Modi. Modi is Modi. Singh is not the only one from royal lineage currently contesting elections. Dushyan Singh, son of former Chief Minister Vasundra Rajay, is contesting on a Lok Sabha ticket from BJP from the Jalawar Baran constituency. Dushyant had earlier been elected five times as Member of Parliament and is known for his regal taste. I know that Modi has done a good job. He has been in the country. And all of us want to make a double engine of the government. I know that Modi has been in the country. Mahima Kumari has been going, she has been receiving this kind of welcome from not only members of Rajput community but from different parts of Raj Samand of Nadwara. She was earlier involved in the campaign of her husband Vishwaraj Singh when he was fighting for assembly elections and now when she is a candidate, the reception for her seems to be a royal and grand one. With camera person Nikhil Sharma, Devankur Vadhavan, in Raj Saman, in Nadwara, for India Today.